So we're back with Series 3 109 and uh, what we're going to be doing today is fitting right off roads acoustic mat system. Now it's quite an easy fit but there are a few things to consider. The most difficult part of the fitting is over the seat boxes. Because all Land Rovers are different, especially this one which has got all number of military switches, latches and catches on it, you have to cut the mat to suit your vehicle and that's the only complicated bit that we're going to have to look into. So we're going to start by getting the inside of the vehicle prepared, ready to receive the mat and we'll go over some details and show you what the kit involves. So we've laid the mat system out for you here to see what you get in the kit and as you can see there's a very well moulded section here that goes over the tunnel into the footwells. You've got a panel here that goes on the bulkhead on the inside of the cab. This is for your seat box, this is the bit we've got to cut. So the first thing we need to do is fit the self-supporting panel onto the bulkhead. What that means is you don't need to glue it, it just sits on there. But what we're going to do and what they advise you do is remove here the uh, four-wheel drive instruction plate and actually use that to pin it back onto the uh, bulkhead. Uh, I quite like to have that on there anyway and I think it will just add a bit more security to the mat. Okay, so we simply slide the bulkhead mat in place and then I'm using self-tappet screws stainless ones just to gently pin that plaque onto the bulkhead. Now unfortunately because there's so many layers of paint on this vehicle being military um, it's going to be almost impossible to take these seats off. Not only that but I need access into my seat boxes every day or whenever I run out of fuel because the fuel tanks are under both the passenger side and the driver side seat box. So the plan is that we're going to actually put the matting system in place and have a lip just sit over the edge here and over the front here with a little section cut for the drop down latch. We're going to continue all the way through, obviously cutting for the handbrake and just do as best job we can. Now to make things a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is actually use the um, handbrake gator retaining plate as a guide um, to cut the aperture for the handbrake lever and I'm going to take the bracket off that covers and protects the switch over tap for my fuel tanks um, and that will give me an idea of where everything sits. So remembering that this is the driver's side and we're right hand drive, don't th confuse yourself thinking that this is the section you should remove for your handbrake. You actually see there's a slight witness mark in here, the same shape as this and I'll show you that in detail and that just sits over the top there look and you can cut that out. So we'll do that now. Do make sure you've got a very sharp brand new blade in your Stanley knife and off you go. It's very thick stuff and it will blunt your blade extremely quickly. So now's the trickiest bit of all. We're going to lay the uh, seat box matting over the top. It's just going to sit there for now. We've made the aperture for the handbrake and then we're going to try and mark all the uh, exposed pieces and the areas for the seats that are going to be cut out. One thing I didn't mention before is this matting is incredibly heavy. Um, that's the idea, it absorbs all the sound. So you might struggle on your own um, so if you can get two people to do it, it's worth it because even this section is quite a lump. Now you need to make sure that you pull it in nice and tight before you mark it because obviously it can't get all the way on with these seats on here. So these are probably the cuts I'm going to make first. And I'm using now the, uh, the lid for the seat box. Um, that I get access to my fuel for, just to run uh, a line down here next to the other seat rail, so I know it's straight and I know it's in the right position. I'm actually finding it quite easy to work inside the vehicle on these, because once I know where my lines are, it's quite e you get a good line on the blade and you can draw it. Just taking your time, it takes two or three times to get it cut properly. And this will be the last time I use this blade, that needs replacing now, but you can see I'm just cutting through now. Don't rush it because it will go through eventually. Once you've got through that top layer, which is the toughest bit, it'll almost just split off in your hands. And just watch these corners. Now this is the third blade I've done and I'm about halfway through. So you I can't stress enough how much easier it is if you just use a new blade. After every probably two metres worth of cutting lines you've done with a blade, at the most, uh, switch it over and get a new one in there. Okay, so we've loosely cut the shape that we need and uh, 
we've just noticed on here as well that you've got some witness marks where the latches are going to be on the boxes so if I just draw a line around there where that is it makes it easy for me to cut and also easier for you to see I've got a new blade in here which is very important just gonna cut right I prefer to cut it from the other side really because you get through that hard layer first and then it tends to peel nicely but I'm sure we can manage just be careful as well on these because where you've cut it if there's a sharp corner if you don't handle it right when you're putting it in and out of the vehicle you could end up tearing it and getting something you don't want there we go and that's the section for our latch now if you're really particular you can sand this material with a very fine um, piece of sandpaper on a, on a electric sander and that'll just make it nice and smooth so if you're that way inclined you want to make a really really nice tidy job of it if you've got a, a restoration you're doing then that is possible well already it's making a big difference to the interior so we've cut round all the seat frames here um, we've allowed for these latches the trickiest bit for me was to actually cut the circular hole to allow for the um, fuel switchover tap to go on but it's all done now so what we've done here is we've actually used the piece that we cut out earlier and uh, just laid it over the top of the box there which I think is sufficient it's a nice snug fit and it just adds a little bit more soundproofing okay so we've got our bulkhead mat on we've got our um, seat box mat on we're now going to fit the footwell mat we've taken the uh, gear knobs off the uh, transfer lever and the uh, four-wheel drive lever and we're just going to slide the mat on the top now now would be a good time to clean everything out treat any metal that you want to treat before you lay the mat in wax oil do anything you like but essentially we should just be able to drop that in now and see how it looks So I've got it over the gear stick first. Getting it to clear the, uh, the handbrake's tricky. Although it's not exactly fragile, you don't want to spike anything through it if you can help it. Okay, that was tricky. So with everything in place, I've just got to quickly trim around where the uh, hinges for the accelerator and also the stop bolt's got to come through. Get that done and I think we're nearly finished.